Even if my profile picture, watermark and intro don't reflect it, the Thomson Pacifics are to this channel equally as important as the WDs are. And with the three year anniversary of TGL fast approaching, on the 10th of April in fact, I thought it appropriate to take another look at the London and North Eastern Railway's Thomson A2-3, in an attempt to offer people a, shall we say, less aged video on this otherwise unanimously dismissed class of Pacific. To quickly run down the content of the original episode of TGL, the 15 Thomson A2-3s were designer Edward Thomson of the LNER's first own three-cylinder Pacific locomotives, that is locomotives with a 462 wheel arrangement. Thomson had hitherto only converted existing locomotives to 462s, engines originally designed by Sir Nigel Gresley, whose death in office was the reason for Thomson being appointed chief mechanical engineer. These conversions were the four LNER Class A2-1, which were Gresley designed Class V2 engines, and the six Class A2-2s, which started life as Gresley Class P22A2s. For starters, I want to expand on a comment I made on the locomotive steam braking. When the first A2 stroke 3s came into service, all but one after their designer Edward Thompson had already retired, they had simple domes at the front end of their boilers. Braking would cause water to surge forward and in turn go up the steam pipe. The steam pipe sits at the top of the boiler and is, to put it simply, the main supply for the locomotive cylinders. When the driver then opens the regulator, the water is pushed along the pipe and ends up in places you generally don't want it to be. For passengers, this was most notable by the A2s bellowing dirty water from their chimneys. At first, this was rectified by placing the steam pipe as far up the dome as possible, although this didn't completely solve the issue. It was only completely eradicated when the original diagram 117 boilers were changed to those of Arthur Peppercorn's 118 diagram, which have a banjo dome with a more sophisticated steam collector on the tapering end of the boiler. Peppercorn being Thompson's replacement as chief mechanical engineer, of course. A lot is made about the A2 stroke 3's apparent inability to compete with locomotives designed by Sir Nigel Gresley. It is therefore a right shame that the LNER themselves disproved this opinion, at the behest of Peppercorn, over 75 years ago. Class premier of the then just A2, without a subdivision, number 500 named Edward Thompson was tested against the capabilities of Gresley's own mixed traffic locomotive class, the V2. Both locos had three cylinders powering 6 foot 2 inch driving wheels, so the A2 and V2 were as apt a comparison as any. During the first test between Leeds and Newcastle, the A2 didn't come out looking very rosy. Number 500 had generally greater fuel consumption than the V2, the only improvement in economy being on a lighter train. The late Peter Townend, ex shedmaster at King's Cross Shed in London, suggests the reason for the A2's poor performance was the poor quality coal. When the same V2 was then tested against number 500 again, this time on Newcastle to Edinburgh trains with significantly heavier loads, the A2 came into its own. The V2 could barely handle 14 coaches, but Edward Thompson, the name of the locomotive number 500, remember, simply ran away with 14 bogies, being more than capable of handling more. With a power advantage of 20%, the Thompson A2s were real bruisers. They even had the power to leave the British Railway Standard 9F standing, as Inspector Bill Buxton reported that a 9F timed cement train had to be worked up Stoke Bank by an A2 stroke 3, with no other engine capable of doing the job as effortlessly as the Thompson Pacific. Between all Thompson A2 subdivisions, they were seen on trains including but not limited to the Flying Scotsman, the Talisman, the Heart of Midlothian, all three Kings Cross to Edinburgh trains, the Norseman, Kings Cross to Newcastle, the West Riding Limited, Kings Cross to Bradford, the Yorkshire Pullman, Kings Cross to Harrogate via Hull and Bradford, the North Britain, which is Glasgow to Leeds, and the Anglo-Scottish Car Carrier, Kings Cross to Perth via Edinburgh. In particular, the run on the Talisman by A2 stroke 3 number 60519 Honeyway, the sole engine to be allocated to Haymarket at Edinburgh, matched the timings of the streamlined coronation train to the minute. If not their falsified reputation as poor haulers or poor steamers, false as we have just gone over, enthusiasts can't seem to wait to point out just how ugly the A2 stroke 3s were. The usually low hanging fruit for such arguments are the length of the thing, and most dumbfoundingly the ugly combination of large smoke deflectors and a stovepipe chimney. To tackle the arguments of length, yes, all of Thompson's specifics are long lags. 
But the real queens of length, quiet at the back, are the London Midland and Scottish Railway's princesses. At 22.6 metres long, the princesses are a good few centimetres longer than any Thompson engine, and the only reason the Thompson 462s come even close to the UK's true elongated Pacific is because of their backsides quiet at the back. The LNER used eight-wheel tenders on their Pacifics. It gives them a longer range and divides the load better. And it is this tender which ends up making the combined length of A2-3 and its tender 21.97 metres. Even against the smaller LMS Duchess Pacific, effectively the upgraded Princess, you can clearly see the actual engine of the A2-3 is shorter. The reason for their length is of course the position of the inside cylinder. Thompson and his draftsmen wanted the cylinders to each be driven by three independent sets of Walschaars valve gear, and the drive to be divided between the front two powered axles. This is then exacerbated by the inside connecting rods being of equal length to the outside connecting rods to ease manufacturing of parts. It would be unfair to call this an all in all wise decision. The divided drive did nothing for the weight distribution and in making a long engine the ride quality was not as good as on a contemporary Pacific design, with the A2 stroke 3s being prone to oscillate. Something less objectionable though was the chimney arrangement. The double blast pipe in chimney was to virtually become a staple of LNER Pacifics. People are often quick to call stovepipe chimneys ugly, although it is time and again proven that stovepipes seem to magically improve the steaming abilities of a locomotive. And when paired with the large deflectors of the A2 stroke 3, the stovepipe does a better job at actually blasting the exhaust up, rather than just kind of puff it out and have the smoke and steam just cling onto the airflow that a lipped chimney creates. And Thompson seemingly knew this. History does not recall if he felt vindicated after his locomotives began suffering from steam trailing right behind the chimney after his locos were fitted with lipped chimneys. 60514, Chamosaire, and 60519, Honeyway, were the only A2-3s to escape such an indignation, both withdrawn with their original stovepipe chimneys. Another myth the Thompson A2-3s cannot seem to shake off was the naming of the very first one, number 500, after her designer. Contemporary literature paints the picture that both Thompson and Peppercorn just couldn't stop their ego and just had to name their first locomotives after themselves. Whilst we know that the decisions were influenced by Sir Ronald Matthews, chairman of the LNER, and Andrew McCosh, head of the locomotive committee. So to perpetuate the myth that Thompson and Peppercorn were so egocentric that they chose the names themselves is unfair to both them and their locomotives. Perhaps the most telling of the capability of the Thompson A2 stroke threes was their infrequent visits to the works, after having their teething troubles sorted out, of course. Particularly remarkable was number 60520, Owen Tudor. For one, she only ever visited the works 10 times in a career of 12 years. Gresley machines, which were not generally subject to preventative maintenance, were run to failure and far exceed the Thompson locomotive's ratio. Owen Tudor, a Peterborough New England shed locomotive, was a particularly good one. Peter Townend tells a tale of her being sent down from New England shed to cover for an A4, much to the A4 driver's dismay. But the driver called Townend back the next day asking if he could keep Owen Tudor for the rest of the week. She was even fit for a king. Freshly renumbered from just 519 to 60519, she hauled the royal train on September the 11th, 1948. Another few interesting members were 60524 Herringbone, 60522 Straight Deal, and 60512 Steady Aim. They were moved to work the ex-Glasgow and South Western Railway in Scotland, which would have made them regulars to Carlisle, Dumfries, Eyre, and theoretically the Port Road where they would have shared most of their duties with the British Railway standard locomotives and ex-LMS designs. This trio were the longest-lived Thompson Pacifics of all, Herringbone being the first of the trio to be withdrawn in February 1965, while Straight Deal and Steady Aim worked into June of that same year. Where Gresley's locos went under due to dieselisation or obsolescence, the Thompson Pacifics were unlucky in being few in number. But despite that, they did indeed outlast many of the types they were tasked to supplement. The A2 stroke 3's reputation is a turbulent one. Disliked for being Thompson engines when they first appeared, their regular crews adored them. Even nowadays, people are split on the Thompson locos. Some call them sacrilegious. Others vehemently stick out their necks for the case of the standard mixed traffic 462. 
In finding their history worthy of not one but three videos, I think I've made it clear where I stand on the Thompson Pacifics. When I picked up Peter Townend's book, East Coast Pacifics at Work, back in July 2023, I knew I was probably going to make another video on the A2-3s. And I think that this revamp of those great locomotives is a step forward to develop the series onto the new state of the channel. With special thanks going to Dean Walker, who made this impression of an A2-3. stroke And I want to thank you for watching. And I hope to see you for the next one. Cheerio!